In this video, we're gonna talk about defining our buy box. Basically, what types of assets are we looking at, targeting, and ultimately investing in? Remember, it's important that we find something that is duplicatable and replicatable so we can create a strong track record of success and ultimately outpaced returns for our investors inside the Wollaston Wealth Management Fund. So a quick overview, you know, a well-defined buy box allows you to quickly hunt and target projects that really fit your criteria. You don't have to relearn the project and building over and over and over again. Think of it similarly as a template, right? Now, by having a good template, this allows you to concisely and quickly communicate your needs to other professionals, such as real estate agents, brokers, managers, or even tradesmen that may be working in the area and helping you find deals. When it comes to location, that's very important to us inside our buy box criteria. So we like Hamden and Hampshire County here in Western Massachusetts, but we've got an emphasis on Holyoke. We're seeing some great deals out here. Holyoke really offers distressed real estate, substantially below market value. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've got a growing community and you've got a local government base that is screaming for more housing. So they're welcoming the new development, which is great to hear if you're a real estate developer, right? At the end of the day, your market knowledge is really important to know. How is the neighborhood going to behave? How's the rents going to behave? You know, what's the values going to behave like? It's important to invest in an operator who understands and knows the market they're working in. From a primary asset type perspective, you know, we're going to be targeting projects that are 10 to 30 units in size. Uh, what we have realized is they tend to be a little too small for your mom and pop home flippers, uh, but they're definitely not big enough for your institutional developers, so they walk right over them. So by targeting a niche uh, of, of properties, this allows us to create value in a market with a little bit less competition. Now, at the end of the day, if the project is slightly smaller or slightly larger, if the deal is good and there's meat on the bones, we're happy to take it down. We've done plenty of two and three family projects that would have been phenomenal returns for our investors if they were funded entirely with private equity. So, but at the end of the day, we're always gonna be targeting distressed or vacant properties that have present value add opportunities. We're not looking for things with crazy permitting structures. We're looking for things that we can renovate by right to create value almost immediately. So remember, buy box, it's a template. You're looking for the same thing over and over again. So we like 10 to 30 units in size, typically. Uh, and remember, because this is somewhat of a niche, we're realizing there's a lot of market inefficiencies in assets of this size. Like I said, they're too big for your mom and pop flippers. They get overwhelmed and they're too small for your institutional developers. So if you're a medium sized fish and you can take down these types of projects and you've got uh, some good structure and good efficiency behind you, you can create a lot of value as a real estate investor. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're all about creating value for our investors and the goal is to outpace and beat the market. From a time horizon perspective, we're always looking to complete these projects inside 24 to 36 months. Obviously, the quicker you complete a project, typically the more profitable it is. With that being said, the more quickly you can complete the project, the more quickly you can recycle that capital into another investment. And investment is all about long-term growth. And if you have the opportunity to compound your earnings, that's where you achieve substantial financial milestones. So our goal inside the Wallace and Wealth Management Fund is to ultimately cycle your capital from project to project and continually grow those gains. However, 24 to 36 month timeline is an appropriate timeline which allows you to substantially complete the project without feeling overly rushed because if you're rushed, that's where mistakes happen. Now, private equity typically involves more risk. Most people know that. However, without risk, there is no reward. We do work to mitigate those risks. We like to focus on distressed real estate, vacant buildings. We like to focus on projects where we can afford to renovate everything. That way we don't get surprised if we open up a wall. And we've got expertise in construction management. We've done over $70 million worth of real 
real estate transactions all in the value add space to date. And that allows us to comfortably and effectively walk into these projects and feel confident about the value add process. Um, but realistically, when you're looking at uh, undervalued, vacant, distressed properties, you're working to buy these buildings below market costs, below replacement costs. And this is going to allow you to create a lot of value once you invest and stabilize the asset. So you might be thinking to yourself, great, all of that sounds wonderful, but if I invest inside the fund, how much money am I gonna make? Well, if you enter the fund, we're going to pay a preferred rate of return of 8% per year on your money. While we're working your money in projects as operators, we're gonna target investments that achieve at least a 20% internal rate of return or achieve a 2x equity multiple for the fund and its investors. So those are three key metrics that we're always looking at inside our buy box. And we're not gonna proceed on a project if it doesn't hit that financial criteria. In the next video, we're gonna be going through some of the key deal requirements, which my partner Harrison is gonna walk you through in a bit more detail.